Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another show of the Victory of the Light with your host, Rob Potter. Um, I'm very honored today to have a special guest, but before I get into my special guest, I again need to remind you of some very exciting updates. We have added Michael Sala to the Mount Shasta uh, Interplanetary Cultural Exchange Conference this summer, which is quite appropriate. He's one of the wonderful ambassadors who's uh, been working hard in what we call exopolitics, um, one of the first persons to coin the term along with Alfred uh, Lambermont Weber, and he'll be joining us and we'll be sharing uh, his information's going up on the banner soon for the uh, Mount Chast Ascension Portal Conference. And by the time this show airs, folks, um, in a couple weeks from the time it's being recorded, uh, I'm going to ask you all to please, please... Uh, get on there. If you want to get your early bird tickets, now's the time. I'm going to be sending out some promotion codes. And for those of you who would like to come to this conference, um, I'd like to you to know that uh, Anya Schaefer, my guest today, has a, a little discount. And she's going to have that by the time this comes up. For those of you who follow Anya and are on her website, um, you can go to um, her page and you can uh, click on a link that will be there, and you can get a little discount to the Ascension Portal Conference. Uh, today, I'm going to refrain uh, from talking about uh, where my link is to support Anya, because uh, we like to help out our speakers here uh, to cover uh, some of their transportation and stuff. Um, also, um, just spoke to Cobra. By the time this interview comes out, a Cobra interview will be taking place on the 16th. You can look for that very shortly. I also will be having a webinar on a monthly basis, and we'll let you know when that one's coming up here. I'll probably announce that in the Cobra interview, and you're going to want to look at that. Um, I'm going to introduce you uh, now right after I talk about my favorite radio station, which is, of course, where I'm at today, PyramidOneNetwork.com. Revolution Radio, as you know, folks, I did have to resign from that station due to the fact that I could not pre-record my shows like this. And uh, Anya and I have been working really hard today to <laughs> to get together. I had internet connection problems all morning. I spent three hours getting connected. We've had some interruptions and phone calls and stuff, but we're online. And I'm with the beautiful Anya Schaefer. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. I'm going to put my glasses on for those of you in Germany who are looking at this, excuse my look here, uh, but I'm going to read it directly. Anya Schaefer has been supporting Omnek Omnek's mission since 1997. As her close friend, manager, and personal assistant, Anya helps Omnek to share her message of unconditional love and brotherhood among the people of Earth. Beside her mission to support Omnek, Anya is working on the manifestation of a project for the transformation of Earth called Omnek's Oasis. Being self-employed in the service sector, she is also running her own business as a publishing service, Discus Publishing Services, and works on the establishment of her own publishing company, Discus Publishing, and she lives in southern Germany, next to Lake Constance. And ladies and gentlemen, Lake Constance is where a good friend of mine, um, uh, Cobra, has done some things, and another uh, uh, great friend of mine, uh, Adam has a restaurant there. It's a very beautiful area and a, a sacred uh, space. I want to talk a little bit about um, the Mount Shasta Conference, folks. Anya will be presenting with me, along with uh, Michael Sala, as I mentioned, James Gilliland, myself. Uh, and, of course, Omnek Omnek, her first presentation since uh, coming out with Wendell Stevens, and I think it was uh, 1991, so almost 25 years for Omnac presenting in the United States in person. This will be a wonderful opportunity for the Light family community to come together and to uh, actually meet Omnac and to uh, uh, find about her uh, beautiful teachings. And you know, I'd like to say that um, I'd like you to understand the revelation that is Omnac Omnac, okay? Her life story represents a plain revelation of truth, and I think it's going to be invaluable to the earth people and our culture to openly embrace this message at this time. Omnek's life is not an oddity 
It's not a publicity stunt to be gawked at or displayed for profit or to appease any cultish followers. I hope you respect the privacy and the courage of her life story and what it represents and recognize the elegance and the open honesty that Omnek um, always expresses in her public appearances. She is the first soul in recent times to openly be declared to the general public that she is from Venus. There have been uh, not so many people in our Earth's history to come forward from Venus. I mean, we do have Valiant Thor, but he's unavailable. And we have uh, many other historical extraterrestrial Venusians in our Earth's history, avatars, incarnations. And there are many, many people from the planet Venus here, but Omnic is the first to come out publicly, and she's well-suited. Uh, Venus, the morning star's influence on our world and our culture, um, will become apparent in the truth as the truth is slowly revealed to the world at large. Um, in my opinion, the master chose well when they chose Omnic and offered her mission uh, to be the icebreaker for the general public in coming out. She holds no scientific secrets or technology, nor is she a threat to the powers that be. Rather, the actual fact of her existence and where she came from is in and of itself the point for humanity to grasp. Many other revelations of life on other worlds and other dimensions are soon to follow for Earth and her people as the whole truth breaks into the light of a new day for humanity. So, again, we're going to invite you to come and experience and test with your own presence and feel with your inner awareness in Mount Shasta the truth as Omnek presents your story. It's going to be a wonderful experience of, of joy and uh, time for us all to get together and to celebrate open interplanetary cultural exchange on, on that level. Uh, and we will have Craig Campobasso with The Stranger of the Pentagon, the screening of the Burbank Film Awards Best Picture uh, by Craig Campobasso, the story of uh, Valiant Thor's introduction to uh, Eisenhower and Nixon and the offer that the benevolent forces made back in the 50s, as well as uh, Scott Lamrill, the wonderful uh, author of the series of Genera, who also wrote an, uh, an addendum part of a uh, chapter in Omnek's book, which is very uh, interesting. And so we're going to have a lot of support there on the wonderful mission of Omnek Omnek. And at this time, folks... Um, I'd like to thank uh, Bob Charles and uh, John Allen, my producers at Pyramid One. And to remind you all to check out um, my website, The Promise Revealed. I have lots of good products if you feel you enjoy this information to come forward. Without further ado, we've got 52 minutes left. And we're going to talk to the always beautiful... Anya Schaefer. She has a radiant presence. If you go to my website, there's a beautiful, some beautiful pictures of her and Omnek on my website there. Um, they're obviously very close friends. And we're going to explore a little bit with Anya today. Anya, thank you and welcome to the Victory of the Light show. It's an honor to finally get you on today. Sorry it took so long. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm very honored and I wish I could speak as perfect and as fast as you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about perfect or fast, but um, <laughs> hey, if, if you'd like, if you have any websites or anything or any appearances you have coming up or anything you'd like people to know um, in regards to connecting with you, please feel free to uh, give that information out. People, I'm going to ask you to get your pens and, and papers. And if um, there's anything like maybe if you have a book you want published or something, you might want to connect with Anya or something like that. So, Anya, what, what, how can people connect with you? Uh, what are your websites? What's the best way to get things going? Well, as I'm here, obviously, uh, mostly to um, represent Omnic, the main website is Omnic's website. Actually, it's my website because I set it up a couple of years ago. Good. Uh, but uh, uh, the link is www.omnic-onic.com. It's not Omnic Onic, uh, but Omnic Omnic, Rob. It's Omnic Onic. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Why don't we spell that for people? It's O M N E C hyphen um, O N E C dot com. So the, it's, it's actually 
Omnek Onek. Omnek Onek. And there are lots of videos on it where you can see her uh, presence. Actually, I'm now, I just received today the video recordings from the last uh, lectures she held in Norway, in Bergen, in Norway, during the UFO conference. This was in October last year. And she was absolutely wonderful. And I'm very happy that there were two brilliant video filmers, professionals, and one of them is a German. And he now he gave me the recordings and they are really perfectly. The sound is perfect. She was in very good spirits. She talked uh, like uh, always. Some of you who know Omnic might know that she had a stroke in 2009. But now she is feeling much better and she looks really good. Of course, she aged um, a little and uh, her speech has changed a little. But she is, um, yeah, the video recordings, I'm, I will upload them in the next days. But there are many, many more on YouTube about Omnek. But first of all, maybe we should say a little bit about who she is, huh? <laughs> Well, um, actually, I'd like to talk a little bit about you today. I mean, I, I could say, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I heard about Omnic and Omnic when I was uh, in 1978, I think it was 19 or 20. I heard a radio interview she had done, and I was very impressed. I felt intuitively, immediately, and I, for people who know me, I can be kind of critical, but I really uh, sensed that this, uh, uh, this young woman was... Uh, a real person. She mentioned that she had worked uh, as a maid and as a, uh, a waitress and uh, was just sharing the fact that she was from Venus. She didn't really quite go into too much stuff. It was kind of an oddity at that time, but I had a good sense that uh, it was genuine. I followed her information. Um, when I went to Egypt in 1991, I went with Colonel Wendell Stevens and some other people, and he told me that he was going to be coming out of, with a book uh, from Omnek Omnek that he had been working on. And uh, so when that came out, I was very excited to read the book From Venus I Came, um, which is now a trilogy. And Omnek has uh, lived a normal life, folks. She hasn't been involved in the New Age movement. She's not, like, been seeking followers. She's lived, uh, if you read her trilogy book, we'll go into that a little bit, but she's had a... Uh, a difficult situation in her personal life, which has, of course, gotten better now in her older age. But um, she's handled everything with a tremendous level of um, elegance and poise. And she has been openly, honestly, and candidly sharing her knowledge and experiences with people in Germany. And, and Anya has been the primary person to help facilitate that. So basically... Um, I'm going to ask you first how you got, how you met Omnek and and a little bit about your personal association, and then we can give some people some tidbits, and we'll go into the the meme. So, how did you actually meet Omnek Omnek, and and how did you guys become such close, fast friends? Okay, um, it was in the beginning. It was the beginning was uh, of course, as you already mentioned, the release of Omnek's first book in English from Venus. I came uh, with the help of Wendell Stevens. And in that, that was 1991. And right after that, um, she was, of course, in this time, uh, during this time, she also gave some, uh, she was uh, at some UFO conferences uh, in America. And um, on one of these conferences, a German man who was very uh, deeply involved in UFO stuff here in Germany, um, right away invited Omnik to come to Germany. And uh, which we, uh, what she did actually, and then she was uh, stuck uh, in Germany. She, uh, it was in 1994 already when her book came out in German. It was translated and published by a very nice publisher, who did a very good job. And they also, and that time, interestingly, the public was very open, and uh, mm, or there was a, there was kind of a how to say, um, it was the right timing and the right persons together to bring her out into public. And so she had many interviews in TV shows. She was in many newspapers and magazines in the German-speaking countries. And um, it was approximately in 1994 or 1995 when I um, 
accidentally switched on the TV and I saw her sitting there in a, in a TV show uh, and she gave an interview. And I was uh, absolutely fascinated right away, immediately. I, I simply thought, my goodness, this is one of the first persons in my life that I see uh, and feel this honest, this um, genuinity uh, and authentic. Uh, she was so authentic and um, I simply followed every word that she said and uh, was absolutely fascinated. And the, um, what I remembered was um, her name, Omnik Onik, her, the way she looked. She looked beautiful. She looked very calm. She uh, had a really very sincere presence and her voice was very calm the way she was speaking about these tremendously important spiritual information was so touching. And uh, my favorite um, quote from her since then is imagination is the key to creation. This really was kind of a seed that was planted somewhere in my head. And it was um, actually three or four years later, when I remembered this incident, because I moved away from my home city, Berlin, to a little city, to a little town in Bavaria, um, all the people still keep asking me, why did you move away from such a big, wonderful city like Berlin to such a Catholic, old, ancient little town in Bavaria? Obviously, it was part of my way because there I met Omnic for the first time physically because I opened a bookstore. I was into esoterics a lot. At that time, I was a searcher. I was looking for uh, answers, life answers. Um, and uh, I opened, uh, with the help of a good friend at that time, uh, my own esoteric bookstore in this little Catholic city. It was the first one uh, in the whole area at that time. What was it and, called? What's, what's the name of the city? Uh, Landshut. Landshut. Can I ask you a question? What was the name of the gentleman who bought her to Germany originally? Michael Hazerman. Uh, Hazerman. I was going to say if it was Hazerman. Um, he was uh, instrumental. Uh, we went over to Germany and, and worked over there with Dr. Fred Bell, and he ended up meeting his uh, uh, third wife, uh, Frauke, over there for many years and uh so i i know michael hazerman he was uh he was uh quite the uh, uh networker C can you explain how she got you said she got stuck there yeah because for as you know she was uh she has been in germany and the german speaking country since then only for for 20 years that's what i mean i mean of course she went she went back to the states sometimes to see her family and stuff but she always had to come back to Germany because people always kept wanting her again and again and again. And her whole um, uh, publication, the next two books and all that's available now developed from the demand from the people in Germany and in Switzerland and Austria, of course, as well. But most of it was uh, really here in Germany. And Obviously, for some reason, I was part. I'm still. I'm part of this whole uh, thing, and so this was meant to be that Omnic and I meet eventually in in my in my bookstore there in Landshut. Because when I opened it, I remembered her book, and I ordered it for myself. And this was the first book that I ordered for myself, and I read it then uh, for the first time in 1997. And I was so touched, you know, I felt like, well, this is home. This is, um, it feels so real that it couldn't be only a dream. And even if it was a dream, I thought I decide that I decide to believe it. <laughs> well, well, I, exactly. That, that's a, you, you've touched on some very important parts. Uh, I've never met Omnic, uh, physically, but uh, when we met the, uh, time on Skype, uh, briefly twice, um, I just sensed a, a real joy. I, I already know Colonel Stevens. Um, I met him. He was uh, sending us Billy Myers contact notes when I was 17, way before anybody, uh, even the UFO contact at the Pleiades book came out. So I was very much uh, uh, 
a, a great devotee and follower of Wendell Stevens is probably the world's premost, premier, most eminent UFO researcher and writer. Uh, and he really knew his stuff and he knew how to uh, determine if people were real. And he told me originally he had kind of put her stuff aside as not being real. But upon further examination, he was forced to realize that her story is true. And of course, this is for each person to decide. Uh, and if you come to Mount Shasta to, to meet Anya, myself, and Omnek and others, you'll you'll get to know that. Um, one of the uh, interesting things, I think, uh, is the fact that she did uh, stay there in Germany. I think it was kind of ordained that way. America is a mess of political spin and control in the media. And um, Probably would have she probably would have encountered more hostile activities and disruptions to her service and uh, fractured minds dealing with it. The the German people were very esoteric. Michael Hazerman's conferences, he was getting three to four hundred people uh, back in the late eighties when I was running around with him over there in Garmisch Park, Kirchen, and uh, all over. So I think it's uh, it. You know, the masters and the guides chose well. You've been a wonderful uh, support uh, for uh, for Om, Omnek Onek. And uh, <laughs> your work is um, respected by me and many people here. It's an honor to be able to bring her to America. And it's, it's frankly, it's long overdue. I'm surprised uh, uh, we didn't get more of a knowledge of her. I certainly would have come to see her. I'm not in a position... Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't in a position at that time to uh, do what I'm doing now, but I certainly would have uh, moved mountains to get to Omnek and to, to meet her. I was very always enthralled by her information, so it's so exciting to meet you and to be moving forward here. Why don't you share now, um, you've shared about, uh, you just you have this feeling and understanding of her authenticity. Let's go into her story um, I want you to recount the story as you remember and understand it. I might comment here or there, but um, mm -hmm. um, and then I'd like to uh, we can maybe share some some personal insights about her. Um, and she's going to break a lot of preconceived notions. A lot of people think, oh, someone from another planet. They think of this uh, beautiful person in a silver space suit with superpowers, floating on a cloud, <laughs> playing a golden harp. So. <laughs> But she's just a real person. Why don't you share uh, a little bit of the backstory of her life and how she came here. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to mute and just share from your memory and your knowledge. And if you could, maybe even give a few more little inside secrets that you've learned from her <laughs> about that journey that is not in the book. <laughs> oh, I, I wish I could tell these kind of very interesting things um maybe um well i think i have to start with what it's with what's in the book and what's uh <laughs> publicly <laughs> uh, available the information and that the information that i read many times and heard and translated many times of course, I wished I was a witness. I wasn't. Uh, I can only tell you what I heard. <laughs> but what I feel is um, possible and realistic. Why not, you know? Um, so according to Omnic, she was born on the astral level of Venus. As we probably know, or many of the listeners probably know, is this uh, a level of higher density? No, not density. Is it density? Less density than the physical it's a higher frequency. It's a different dimension. And um, and according to Omnic, the uh, Venusians had a physical society long, long time ago, millions of years ago, probably. And now this uh, society and these cultures still exist and still reside, but not on the physical anymore because the physical situation has changed and the physical uh, planet cannot support any, any life anymore. So these cultures are on the astral in another dimension. Yes? I cannot hear you anymore, Rob. Do they have a do they have a phys, they have a physical presence on the surface? Okay, they do have some physical uh, presence yes. there, don't they? Um, Omnic, according to Omnic, uh, there is a city called Reds that's in the physical and on the other dimension at the same time. It's a multi-dimensional city, 
And uh, she said that she manifested her own physical body in this city. This is where they go when they want, when they decide that they want to uh, finish their lives in the physical realm. So they have the ability and the knowledge how to do that. And this is where they go. According to Omnic, every planet has these, um, um, or let's say the planet she knows about has these uh, uh, multidimensional cities. And I don't, I only know from this one city, this is called Reds. And she said that she uh, went there to, together with her uncle Odin um, and manifested the physical body of a seven year old child. And then she was brought to earth accompanied by her uncle who is still according to Omnic in the physical. He's a scientist. And, uh, and she was brought here with a spaceship. First of all, she was brought to a monastery in Tibet where she learned uh, to get used to her own, to her body because, uh, of course, on the astral, she, uh, she did not have these kind of limitations. She was used to have a, a round um, view. Um, she had no physical limitations. She used to have a 360-degree view. People, when yeah. you're on the astral plane, it's different. You, we don't, they don't see with their eyes. They actually have a, a direct connection to perception, all, yeah. perception of all around. And yeah. uh, she also, um, if I could, I'd like to go back a little bit. So I, I'd like to ask you a question here. Um, once they become physical, can they return to the astral world? Oh. No, Omnic said, this is a question that people ask her very often. She said, no, when you de when they decide, this is why it rarely happens, because normally they don't decide to do this. In her case, it was um, something that she decided for uh, at least three good reasons. So she decided to do this, and she knows that she has to remain and to stay in the physical as long as her body functions. And then she dies like everybody else. It's interesting because on Venus, they, they live a very long time. What is the average lifespan of a being on the astral plane on Venus? About 500 Earth years. 500 Earth years in the astral plane. And um, from the book, folks, that you can uh, get at omnekonek.com, or you can get a virtual version to download or a physical version. Um, she actually says that... Um, um, I guess uh, when she became uh, physical, she was uh, had lived on Venus for 140 years, and yet she was still still quite young on Venus. Correct? Exactly. She was seven. So she was equivalent of seven Earth years, but on Venus, she had a very long childhood of over 140 Earth years, approximately. Yeah. So so it's interesting. Um, she had all this massive knowledge and wisdom, and she transfers to a younger child's body, and 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 now so she'll have a very short lifetime, and I presume uh, she she will return to Venus. Is that correct? No, she said that she doesn't return to Venus anymore because she's finished <laughs> with the first and the second grade. Uh, this means finished with the physical and the astral realm. She says that she will go to a higher level when she goes. So when she passes over, uh, she can go over. I think there were, um, was there some talk that um, some of the master that had asked her to remain to uh, act as a guide on Venus? I haven't, I, I haven't heard that, no. Okay, I thought I maybe one of the interviews I'd heard that. Okay, so... So here we have uh, Omnac, folks. She has uh, uh, decided to come to Earth. And just for the heck of it, can you give us uh, those three reasons? Yeah. Uh, one reason was her own karma. She says that she would have had to return uh, to the earth in another incarnation anyway, because she was not finished. She still had some open builds. And um, so she was given the chance to finish all her karmic uh, remains and bonds in this one lifetime when she decides to come to earth with her own physical body. Of course, she 
uh, in a way or as so she knew that this this would be uh, of course a hardcore uh, story because she had to put all the rest of karma in this one life and so uh, this is one of the reasons why her life was very hard and difficult and the second reason is that she uh, was sent here with a mission um, of course, to share her knowledge later in her life. When she was younger, from her childhood, until she um, went into, the, into public, she started to, to go into the public at around, I think she was around 40 or so. So she had uh, a pretty long t time of her life when she was not a public person, when she was only living and had husbands and uh, and children and uh, family and jobs and she just lived her life and uh, in that time this was the third reason she was more or less an experiment she was uh, also sent here so that she could be monitored from the Venusians to see if a child can from Venus with a manifested physical body is able to survive in our societies that have a very low consciousness compared to the Venusians. And they also wanted to see how they can bring information at all to our uh, minds and to our people on Earth. Because, of course, we need um, to grow spiritually. And they have the spiritual law of non-interference. They can't just come here, show up and bring information like prophets are uh, interfere and um, manipulating this is all these kind of things from the negative forces but this is not from the from the good guys so to say so they had to find good ways how to bring information how to change people conscious people's consciousness and so on and so this was also a reason that Omnic was observed she was brought here to to so that they can figure out how what what other ways what can we do to help people on earth Okay. Yeah. So, so these were good reasons. <laughs> yeah, th those are good reasons too. Um, uh, and folks, if you read the the trilogy book, it, you can see behind. Uh, for those of you in Germany, you're looking at the video. There's a book called uh, of the Venus Trilogy. And for those of you who can't see it, uh, who are on my radio show only, you'll be able to uh, download that um, uh, version and. The second book is called Angels Don't Cry, and uh, maybe Omnek didn't cry as an angel, but boy, it's a tearjerker. It, she did go through a lot of stress. Uh, it reminds me of uh, a famous book by a uh, uh, Tibetan called Lobsong Rampa, yeah. who, who exited his body and uh, ended up going into an, uh, I think it's an English or an Irish or Scottish body or something, and uh um, coming out that he was from Tibet after he kind of figured out how to use his body. It, he kind of went through the same thing Omnek went through, kind of coming into a new body and stuff. And he wrote a book that kind of chronicled, uh, it's kind of similar to uh, Angels Don't Cry. It's called Doctor from Lahasa. And you'll never believe the suffering that that guy went through in his experiences to come to the, it really lets you know what a, what a tough world we have here. And, um, all of us are under this pressure, and, and this is why uh, the, the spiritual message of Omnek and our uh, Venusian uh, space family neighbors is so important. The teachings of uh, the spiritual teachings from Venus are kind of in a in a, a group here we call Ekinkar, and there are some of the essence of the teachings there. Um, you don't have to join Ekinkar to become any part of their their group following just like anything else but the teachings that are contained in the books are about soul travel and a very important aspect of Omnex's work is uh, just a, her ability to explain the nature of the soul and the different dimensions because she has experience so i guess uh w let's go so i guess we can continue on um, if you'd like to share a little bit uh, more on anything that you want to go into here. We've talked about Omnek. She arrived here. She landed in Tibet, uh, got her kind of earth leg gravity going. And then um, I guess they, they had foreseen certain things are known, it seems, as though in the astral plane. Uh, can you tell, let's give a little history about 
the personal karma clearing that she had with her earth-based sister and explain who she's placed she was taking, how that took place, and how she integrated seamlessly with no one knowing who she was different and how that worked out. Yeah. Of course, this uh, is, uh, yeah, this is, this is a, a good story. Um, uh, I, th I, I, would, I just would like to mention again that uh, Omnic is not a walk-in. Sometimes people mix this up. So really we have to distinguish uh, because Lobsang Rampa, I love Lobsang Rampa's books really. Uh, they, have, they transfer almost the same feeling to my soul than Omnic's books because I feel the same uh, genuinity and authenticity like with Omnic. Absolutely. I, tr I always believe the story right away, but he was a walk-in, right? So his body, he was a Tibetan monk and his body did not function anymore. And so the spiritual guides and so on chose a new body for him. And uh, this was a pre-planned uh, um, soul exchange, uh, what is called a walk-in. But in Omnic's case, of course, it's different because she manifested a physical body, her own physical body on Venus. And she was physically replaced on earth then so what happened was according to her and according to her autobiography that uh, she stayed about a year in uh, tibet in the in the monastery in tibet where she learned to get used to her physical body and when the preparations were finished and the right time came because it had to be the right timing everything was uh um seen, um, observed from from uh, the Venusians or from the people who were involved in this uh, whole scenario. And um, it was right at that moment when her, uh, when the other girl called Sheila, Sheila Gibson, this was the girl she replaced eventually in America to uh, find a way into this American family and into our society. So this other girl um, was about to, to die in a bus, bus accident. And uh, this was part of the whole karmic thing um, because Omnic says that this other girl was her sister in another lifetime during the French Revolution. And this girl or this person, this soul, gave her life for Omnic so that Omnic could continue with what she was doing at that time. And uh, the reason uh, why, this, uh, there, why there was still a karmic situation was that Omnic owed this Sheila something. And so she took over Sheila's karma. She replaced her in this lifetime to um, fulfill her uh, the rest of the karmic uh, debts, so to say. And uh, the thing that happened was that uh, this this uh, little girl Sheila had a very hard um, childhood. She was having a, a difficult uh, situation with um, changing boyfriends from her mother, and the mother was very uh, unstable in herself. So there are many reasons, and this is all written in the book. And this girl was um, sent from her mother in a bus to her grandmother's house for her own protection. And this uh, grandmother hadn't seen this girl, Sheila, for, I don't know, maybe two or three years or so. And everybody knows that children uh, change her looks uh, the way they look pretty rapidly uh, when they are, especially when they are so young. And um, so this was the, the time period when Omnic was supposed to take her place. And this bus um, had an accident. Uh, Omnic says that this bus uh, had a heart accident, so that uh, it was fire and flames, and that the body of Sheila died during this accident and uh, burned, or I don't know if it burned or half burned or whatever. She says that she was placed there um, by her uncle Odin and the other person who accompanied them it was a Martian and that they took care of the dead body of the Sheila girl. So this is, uh, of course, the reason why it was uh, never found. 
because there um, shouldn't be any witnesses and there shouldn't be any proofs. It should have been, it, it, it had to be um, an exchange of these two girls that nobody noticed, obviously. And this is how she finally came into her earthly family because she had the same clothes on like Sheila. She was perfectly prepared. She had the, sh the same shoes. She had the same little note in her pocket uh, from her mother for her grandmother. And um, she was just the same little girl. And um, during this chaos, while this accident had happened and, and so on, um, Omnek appeared and the other body was gone. And then somehow she was uh, in the next bus or whatever exactly happened. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea if it, pos if it is possible to find any newspapers from that time uh, proving anything like that. I have no clue. But this doesn't matter. It really doesn't play a role. So she was then brought uh, and arrived finally at her grandmother's house. Okay, well, it seems, though, then uh, she obviously, um, exactly how the transfer was made, I think obviously they left her, made sure that she was picked up. Um, they put the note from the mother, uh, from the dead body onto Omnek, and she was able to uh, make the switch and to arrive at her grandmother's house, who hadn't seen her since she was almost a little baby. And so there was a very... Uh, 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 good probability that no one would suspect anything. And, and it turns out her mother didn't see her for some years. Unfortunately, her mother was involved in very bad relationships, being alcoholic and being abused by a series of men. It's a horrible story, but uh, Omnek really handled her life with a tremendous amount of unconditional love and forgiveness. And um, um, I won't even go into the details in her personal family life. You, she's exposed that in the book, and I highly recommend you read that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it rivals the life of Christ as far as suffering and uh, forgiveness goes. It's a tremendous testament to her character. Uh, when I spoke to her, uh, everyone was forgiven, and um, she's um, really uh, been a positive influence in a lot of people's lives. So um, that's a very uh, good thing. Um, I wanted to, uh, for some reason, my do not disturb sign didn't come off. Uh, I got a little call there, but... Uh, let's go into the next step. We've got a, a couple more uh, minutes here, and we're going to have Anya on again. We're going to explore Omnic Omnic's life again, folks, and then uh, we're going to follow up with a, a with our interview of Omnic. Uh, hopefully, we can get in an hour and a half uh, with her. I'd like to give you guys a little update, um, and this is a question I wanted to ask you: Is Omnic, of course, lived her life, and she did have occasional contacts. Um, specific meetings where she was guided and they would have occasional contact with her and they would actually offer some healing to her in regards to um, her uh, physical body and they would put crystals on her with sound frequencies and colors and radionics and kind of kept her kind of healthy but um, people wonder if she's had a stroke now uh, that didn't actually uh, save her from her own actions. And can you talk a little bit about um, what happened with the stroke? To, and I, did they did they say that uh, they wanted her to experience the um, consequences of her actions? So they they're not they didn't take her up anymore for any more of the advanced healing. Is that correct? Yes, as far as I know, yeah. Okay. She, it, it ended. Uh, there was a point when they decided that it was uh, against some spiritual laws that uh, she received this kind of special extra help. And so it stopped. She did not get these uh, special treatments and healing sessions any further. And after that, uh, I think I spoke with her the last time when she was here uh, about some details. I think I must, oh God, I think I'm not sure if I can remember everything, um, but um, when exactly, I mean, the last treatment was. But as far as I could observe it, after that, her physical problem started. And the stroke was just the high peak of it. It was, um, but she already had many, many severe difficulties. She was many times in intensive care and she had this and that and the other. She was in hospitals 
Um, she had her hospital t- hospital tour in Germany as well, you know, uh, not only a UFO conference tour, also a hospital. And the, um, yeah, the, the ultimate last thing was then the stroke in 2009. And this remains. So it doesn't prob- do anymore. So probably it's a little bit of the um, situation where um, the refined Venusian body probably doesn't adapt even though it's created physical it probably ha- looks like they've observed there have been some situations here and uh omnek omnek living on earth she's taken up probably some of our bad habits um <laughs> she yeah, a- yes. <laughs> she actually has a drink every now and then and uh and actually has been known to smoke a little cigarette too huh yeah, now she is really very uh, uh, ba- balanced. Uh, of course, she can't drink so much anymore and she can't smoke so much anymore. Um, but she enjoyed it. Yes, she she really used to enjoy everything. And um, I can. this is maybe one of the little secrets that I can share you because I um, met her during that time when I was also still, no, at that time I was just having a very perfect time. I was vegetarian. I didn't smoke and I didn't drink alcohol when I met Nick for the first time. And together with her, um, it was uh, a good, uh, reason for starting it all over again. Oh, and I, don't to have a good, of fun. I don't know if that's <laughs> a good reason, but, um, but, um Oh, we enjoyed. We had so many parties, and we really enjoyed it a lot. It made it. It, it was. It was uh, a good time, and it was also for people. The um, the interesting point in this is that it was for some people good uh, and relaxed them. And I was one of them in her presence. That she was not this holy. Uh, holy uh, person on the pedestal, you know, because she was not this kind of perfect person. She was just um, trying everything to enjoy her life and to be as normal as everybody else as well. And, well, smoking and having a glass of wine or beer um, was part of it. And it just uh, took away the holiness from her. And it was very relaxing and very funny. We had a very good time at that time. And it helped me to get closer to her. Well, that's very well, good. I, I'd, I'd like you to share a little bit. Um, tell me about um, anything here that you think the, the people would be interested in learning about her uh, personal life uh, in terms of what she's taught and um, some of the, the things that you find from her teachings are very important. I know you um, mentioned, I think, uh, the secret to manifestation is a man of, is imagination and the valiant thor in their teachings they do speak a lot about visualization and imagining and and holding spaces what other uh, spiritual important lessons can we learn from omnek and her teachings that you've heard through these many years well um she obviously and um omnek is uh, um, a representative or a bearer bearer or bearer a bearer <laughs> she is a love um, person, she she is um, somebody who loves unconditionally. She has the same love that God has for all that God created. And she says that the most important thing that people on Earth have to learn is to replace judgment and criticism with love and acceptance. Um. This is a very uh, important, important lesson because love can heal everything and love is the most important and the most powerful force in the whole universe because love is the basic for the whole creation. According to Omnic, God created everything out of love for itself. So love is the reason for the whole existence of everything that's there. And Omnic is perfect in loving. She is really perfect in forgiving, in loving, in non-judging and in non-criticizing people. I've never ever heard her uh, any anything hard, anything critical, something like that. She's always positive 
and very, very humorous and a really very sweet, special person. Yes, her humor is quite evident. She has a wonderful, uh, yeah. wonderful joy in her in her countenance and her voice. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I mean, she raised kids. I mean, you there's obviously some guidance there. I mean, she must have said, Johnny, don't do that, or uh, whatever her kids' names were. You shouldn't be doing this, or you shouldn't be doing There must have been some sort of boundaries. Or, uh, she never criticizes or tries to correct in any way, huh? Of course, of course she does, of course, yes. And uh, I think that all of her children are probably pretty well behaved. Well, meanwhile, they are all adults. They are around my age. Uh, um, some, is, some are older, some are younger. Um, but of course, I know that she can also be pretty strict. Of course, I mean, you know, when I met her, she was already, all her children were already adults. And actually, until now, I only know one of the four. So I don't really know, uh, but I know from her um, teachings and from when she speaks with people and children is a subject that comes up all the time, um, how to be with children, how to set them limits. And this is something that's very important, but this doesn't have to do anything with criticizing or judging. She explains to them um, that they cannot behave like this and that because then others don't like them anymore. She always gives them good reasons. And so um, she had, I'm sure that she was a very good mother and she knew how to do these kind of things. Her children are not chaotic persons. They are all uh, very good uh, human beings, I think, <laughs> from her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Um well, I'm going to ask you, um, tell me some of the more memorable experiences you've had uh, with Omnek. Maybe uh, maybe a humorous story or um, maybe you could share a little bit about her love for dance or, you know, share, share some, some something interesting that you feel that touched you in your time with her on a personal level. Maybe uh, you were you were down on the, uh, you know, maybe you were at the Bahnhofstrasse down there doing something or I'm just making a joke, but you know, you were, something happened and, and, uh, Omnic had a unique experience with you that maybe, uh, you felt was important or interesting that, that was a lesson or a, a viewpoint of, of hers that was a powerful incident for you. Oh my God. There were many, many things, especially in the beginning. I mean, the, the I can I don't really know. Oh my God! There I could probably share thousands of stories if I um, recall them all. Um, I mean, for me personally, I already told you that the first uh, time that I saw her, she had a very deep impact on me already. And when I met her personally, physically for the first time, it was even uh, no. It, I mean, the whole feelings that she uh, caused uh, that came out of my own self during the time when we met and when we had our first time were so extraordinarily um, um, interesting and um, unique for me that it was just life changing the whole beginning time. Now I'm very used to her energy and we are very relaxed with each other and um just uh, easy going but in the beginning i was so overwhelmed because it was really that this soul this person omnic onic she she was uh, brought into my life uh, to um cause consciousness expanding experiences one after the other it was all uh, i was really growing and uh, i had one thing after the other i mean what can I tell you? The first uh, time, for example, when she was in my bookstore at that time and we had this uh, first workshop with each other and I was eventually able to relax in her presence after I was a nervous bundle beforehand. And then for the first time in my whole life, I felt what love is. This was something special and I can, I will never forget this. Of course, I don't have this feeling Unfortunately, I don't feel it all the time. I think probably she, maybe she does feel it all the time, this love. Uh, I'm, I'm not even, I, sh I'm, I don't know. We have to ask her. But this 
uh, presence of, of love, of divine love, it was there in the room and it was radiating from her through her voice and through her charisma, through what she said and uh, her eyes. And I think it was the first time when our eyes met that this uh, love was able to reach me finally. This is what I was looking for in my my whole life. And this, uh, I think, must have been the beginning for experiences that I went through in the following years that really um, helped me to absolutely open my awareness and my consciousness and to make really experiences that I would never have dared to allow myself to have beforehand because I was too much into into what everybody else almost is on this planet, into fear, into insecurity, into not being sure about uh, themselves. And Omnic gave me this, no, it was not a personal thing. She's only a um, transmitter. Huh? And it was there and it helped me to allow myself eventually to open up myself to life and to make experiences that I would never have dared beforehand for, yeah, for, for the reasons that I mentioned, for fear, for example. Yeah, it, it seems we talk about unconditional love and, um, you know, this feeling, but to actually have it and experience it as opposed to having it be a uh, intellectual concept is another situation, and I can imagine when you first met Omnek, that, um, that, you know, oh, here's this woman from Venus and you got to be on your, your toes and how is she acting? And you go out to a bar and she has a couple drinks and smokes some cigarettes and eats some meat. And you're a vegetarian trying to become, uh, uh, spiritual and, and kind of pure. Uh, not that maybe following her in that was probably maybe not the best idea. Um, you know, I'm under the impression that that probably, was not the, the best choice for her, but of course we don't judge or criticize people have free will to choose. But, um, you know, uh, I believe me, I drink and, uh, I, I've eaten plenty of meat in my lifetime. So, but obviously the higher choice probably would be to be vegetarian would be to not need to drink, but to be, um, you know, more healthy, but, uh, trying to impose ideas and limitations on anyone is always a bad idea. I want to talk about the idea of the transmitter that you mentioned. I think is important uh, for people to know, and I know this from you personally and the way Omnek is, is that you weren't seeking another person to give you this experience. The fact is, is that when we go and we sit with these higher beings, sometimes these avatars or these very high spiritual beings, they act as a beacon of an energy and it's not about their persons. It's not about what they're doing. It's about the energy that's coming from them. And people yeah. have a tendency to worship the person instead of the own, the inner light, which you reveal to yourself that's already within you. And you were able to tap into her uh, as kind of a radiating force. And I think that's a big part of uh, her experience. I really sense that joy and that um, spontaneity and that authentic uh natural love that she has and that um, you know i hope people will come and uh for themselves to come and experience that um you know you said where could you start i mean um you you said that one room if you could tell us uh maybe tell us uh because i find this interesting i do kind of see her as a spiritual teacher and a guide and if you don't want to reveal your personal thing but maybe share with us a, a preconceived notion idea that you had about something that um, through an association with her, you just got like a light bulb and it, it just turned on for you that, that you were limited. What was a, a major, um, uh, thing for you? Um, and I know you had a, you're probably working very hard in the talk and, you know, I know, uh, Germans are like me, very organized and always a schedule and knowing what we're doing. Uh, but what was a, something that just clicked for you that, you just kind of changed a whole attitude about a certain way that you thought that you needed. Maybe you were, maybe it was you're generating on fear and all these things that we have. What was the kind of experience or, or, or situation that you were thinking in a certain way? Maybe you could illustrate for us a teaching that she gave you that you might be able to pass on to others about that kind of thing. 
Uh, I'm. Oh, this was a long, uh, <laughs> a long introduction. I'm not sure. Can you um, can you um, put it in in less words? The question. I'm not really yeah. sure what I can. Okay. Um, give us a, an, a personal experience you had where you learned something from Omnek about thinking in a different way. What was the experience? What were, what did you used to think? What happened? that the teaching made you understand something completely different? Okay, for example, um, to be more attentive in the moment. This is also one, one of the... Because Omnic is a person who lives uh, very much in the now. She uh, has always had uh, trouble with time and with uh, money, all these uh, man-made things on earth. She uh, is absolutely not into, you know, um, so um, she is very, a very, very, this is, I think, part of her uh, charisma and her uh, strength and her power is that she is very present. She's always present. You will never see her that she's uh, dreaming around or, or something like that. And I think it was one of the first times that I was, or even the first time when we were... Um, going together to a concert i was uh, at that time in love with a piano player and he had and this was something that you know i had the feeling i have to share this with omnic so these kind of things were so intensive and it's still sometimes like that that if i feel something is very important for me omnic is the first one i have to share it with because i know that she understands me she loves it uh, um, and you know this is this non-criticizing thing this is uh, amazing um, of course today I don't call her anymore when I'm in love and, uh, this is ridiculous but at that time um, I wanted her to see this person in concert and she, we went there together and um, and we had to go to the toilet. It was in the basement somewhere, somewhere lower down. And I was all excited and nervous that she would see him and that I would see him and all these kind of emotions. And there was a plant behind a window. It was an, uh, um, this kind of, in German we say agave. This is a, a green with big green uh, leaves. This uh, huge plant that you sometimes have in the desert areas with lots of water, sometimes in the, in the leaves. And there were, for some crazy reasons, two red dots, uh, stickers, two red stickers like points or dots on the window. And behind this window was this plant. And Omnic um, saw this. I didn't recognize this at all. I wouldn't have noticed it, never. And she said, look at that monster. Because the red things looked like eyes and the huge green leaves looked like arms of a, of a crazy big monster. So what happened in this moment was uh, that she helped me, first of all, to see what's around me. And second, to make fun of what's around me, not to take everything so serious. These kind of things, um, yeah, for example, this was the first time that she helped me to see these things. And it was not very, very much time after. I think it was winter and I saw a nun uh, walking somewhere uh, on, on the snow. And for me, it was a penguin and I had to laugh. So these kind of things I started to see differently and to also see more funny things in the world around me and to be more uh, clear and attentive. Of course, I don't have this always anymore, but Omnic taught me these kind of things, yes. Okay, well, that's a very good story. I'm really interested. That was pretty cute. Um, so you were kind of like all anxious and, 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 uh, and butterflies to have your uh, spiritual mentor and friend to meet this guy, and you were all uptight, and she just said, oh, live in the moment and have some fun. Uh, we got to hear a little bit of the end of the story what happened uh, with uh, the new boyfriend? Uh, did you guys meet and go out to dinner? And what happened? <laughs> oh, oh um, we had a we had a good time. In the end, uh, um, I moved away from that city. I, in the end, uh, my life took a, a different in a different direction. But we had, uh, I think, it was half a year or so that Omnic and 
Um, she also had a, a friend at that time, a German she um, liked. And so we were sometimes spending time together and it all, it, yeah, we are still all friends now, more or less. It's all good. <laughs> but I never married him, no. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, let's see now. Um, we've had... Um, we kind of heard some personal stories. We heard about a little about her coming to Venus. There's uh, so much, so many questions, so many people will have, and you'll just be able to come to Mount Shasta, hear her story, and I think we're going to do a lot of questions and answers there. I'm going to be sharing with the guests beforehand who are coming to Shasta um, to look her up on YouTube. And for those of you who haven't heard of Omnek Omnek, you could put her name in. Once again, I'm going to say it, O-M-N-E-C hyphen O-N-E-C dot com or you could just put in O-M-N-E-C O-N-E-C in YouTube or Google and you're going to get a lot of information. Um, you could disregard any of the negative stuff. Omnic Omnic is really good. A real interesting thing that you mentioned is she has no concept of time and stuff and living in the now and money. And it's really funny because we talked uh, recently that there was a woman who... Uh, you know, like all of us who try to get things together, uh, we work really hard to get people together. And she was supposed to talk for, I think, uh, uh, two hours or an hour and a half or something on a group call. And uh, there was a bunch of people who had paid to listen to Omnek. And uh, the lady who had put it on, um, Omnek got tired in the middle and said, oh, I have to go do my nails now. And, and uh, <laughs> so she doesn't quite... Um, uh, have that concept or attachment to money and schedules, which I think is just, I, I find it kind of joyful and humorous in a way. Yes. Well, those people, I, I heard this story, and I think there are sometimes people who don't think this is very funny. But, um, well, what can you say? That's that's how Omnic is, you know. This is she she sticks with her schedule. Of course, when she when she knows that she has to have an appearance, uh, when she has an appearance and she has a date, um, you can one hundred percent rely on her. And if you see her on these YouTube videos, you see that she's one hundred percent present. She would, you know, when she's doing something, she's absolutely doing something. But when she has an appointment or something is, or I mean. That's her. Then she expresses it, and uh, and um, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I can I understand. I hope uh, you know the you know, timing and stuff. Timing. Of course, when you have a lot of people, it's a different situation. So, um, um, yeah. but uh, of course, uh, of course, this is also part of my job. You know, to take care of these things. I mean, I have been working and traveling with her a lot in the last years. And of course, I I consider myself really um, um, as somehow as a little bridge uh, between Omnic and the rest of the world. It's in German. In Germany, it was even more obvious because I was also the translator. But uh, all the other things, I mean, the website Omnic, it's it it's really um, weird, and I don't really absolutely understand it completely. But without me, she wasn't. She would have been disappeared from the picture. There would maybe be some little old articles, and some old videos. But um, for some reason, I'm in this strange position that I help her to uh, keep uh, her um, her to keep in touch with the people. And uh, so, of course, when I'm with her. It's, it helps her a lot, not only physically now with her stroke and everything, but also to, um, to, uh, yeah, to be in time and to really do the uh, appointments and to, be, to, do this, to stick to her schedule. It's, it's easier for her. She needs somebody who does, who does this with her. Well, thank you very much. It's, I'm really glad that you're there for her. It seems like it's ordained. It's been kind of a, a mission there, you supporting her and making sure that she got her message out in Germany. And uh, I really wish uh, we could have more of it uh, uh, shared with the world through the years. Uh, you know, of course, she is slowed down now. And uh, um, we'll hopefully we'll get some, some good times with her in Shasta. We've gone over the time here, but it's a special interview, and I hope the radio station will understand. And... Um, We'll uh, uh, go forward um, 
um, here in the near future again with another show. Anya, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to have you on again um, before the show. Maybe introduce Anya, and we'll be asking her some questions. And, um, of course, we're going to look forward to seeing you in Mount Shasta. And hopefully, folks, uh, if you're interested, if this has tickled your fancy and you want to come to the Mount Shasta Conference, um, um, you can, uh, I guess, check out my website. Do you have a place where you're going to put your link up uh, that you can tell people right now? Where are they going to go if they are uh, wanted to purchase tickets through you? Where do people go? Well, on the website, as uh, I, I will put it in a widget in the sidebar probably or um I, there is in, in the menu schedule 2015, there will be the Mount Shasta uh, um, conference, also in an article. Okay, yeah. well, there you, ha- there you have it, folks. You're going to be able to go to uh, O-M-N-E-C, uh, dash onec.com, and in the sidebar uh, widget menu there, you can uh, purchase tickets. Uh, she'll have a little discounted uh, price there. Um, folks, I really hope that you will um, get your tickets soon. We do need to get uh, plane tickets and a budget going. Uh, we do have some sales, but um, trying to get uh, a few more early bird purchases to save some yourself some money. So I'm going to recommend you get that. And once again, thank you to Pyramid One Network, uh, John and Alan there and Bob Charles for your love and support here. And Victory to the Light Radio Show. Thank you, Anya. Say hi to Almec for for me, okay? 